Leader of the Third Party. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Health care in this province is in dire straits, and here on Vancouver Island, the problems are severe. This was apparent at CBC's Town Hall last night, where people shared their heartbreaking stories while a senior health official sat at the back of the room with her arms crossed, shaking her head. There is a serious organizational culture issue at Island Health. A leaked Island Health employee satisfaction survey was damning. Of the 11,000 staff who responded, less than half felt satisfied with their management. And worst of all, overwhelming perception was that Island <coughs> Health does not care about their well-being. And the 2022 Doctors of BC report found that Island Health physicians have the lowest satisfaction with their health authority in the province and it's been declining year over year. Doctors speaking out about their serious concerns about patient safety are threatened, punished, and silenced. Island Health isn't just punishing doctors, though, Honourable Speaker. They're punishing entire communities. The patients who are going without care are the ones who the Minister must be accountable to. And my question through you is to the Minister of Health, does he have confidence in Island Health? Minister of Health. Uh, thank you, Honourable Speaker. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Yes, I have confidence in Island Health, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> Members. Members. Minister will continue. Uh, uh, Honourable Speaker, uh, Island Health, Honourable Speaker, has delivered over the last three years. And that means Island Health is doctors and nurses and nurse practitioners and health sciences professionals and healthcare workers. Has delivered, Honorable Speaker, an extraordinary response to a pandemic that has faced the entire world. And they've done it together, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, over the last uh, 12 months, and Island Health has been part of that. We have a new, uh, a new uh, pr to practice contracts for new doctors to bring them in to longitudinal primary care. We've set records in the number of surgeries and diagnostic procedures we've done, which matters for people who need surgery and matters for people who need diagnostic procedures, Honourable Speaker. And we're working hard to deliver care everywhere. I reject the idea that when people raise concerns, they are threatened. They are not, Honourable Speaker. We have an outstanding team at Island Health, Honourable Speaker. We have an outstanding team that is doing its very best to deliver health care in very challenging circumstances, a worldwide pandemic, and have set records in the process. We always have to do better, Honourable Speaker. We always have to work harder with staff people. We always have to work harder with our teams to make sure that they're involved in decisions. But I have confidence in Island Health to do so. Leader of the Third Party Supplemental. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. When, a health, an, when the Island Health Employee Satisfaction Survey comes out and fewer than half say that they're satisfied with their management and they say that they, their health authorities not care about their well-being, I would hope that the Minister would be concerned about that. I would hope that the Minister would indicate that as the representative for people in this province, that he would demonstrate some concern about the conditions that are being expressed in a survey like that. Let's look at one situation in Island Health, Honourable Speaker. There used to be four doctors for the Port Hardy Hospital. Come this summer, there will be one. Dr. Alex Nateros has come forward with solutions for his patients. Hiring physician assistants would be a way to meet the needs of people on the North Island who have been deeply underserved by the health system. They have seen hospital closures become a regular part of their lives, but his solutions are being rejected. He, Dr. Nateros, has spoken out about the mismanagement of healthcare by Island Health. In his own words, he is experiencing, quote, continued harassment by the health authority leadership. That is the words of a doctor who is holding down the emergency room in Port Hardy who is serving the needs of people in those communities. His experiences are echoed by doctors across the region and across the province. And it's not doctors who are being punished. It is communities. It is people who are suffering. 
The minister says everything is fine, but that is not what people are experiencing. My question through you, Honourable Speaker, is to the Minister of Health. Will he agree to meet with the healthcare professionals working for Island Health within the next two weeks? Minister of Health. Well, thank you, Honourable Speaker. And with respect to uh, um, the issues in the North Island, uh, in the last week we've, we've taken specific action to support those communities. That means incentives to bring nurses and doctors to the region. Additional, Honourable Speaker, diagnostic care in the region, Honourable Speaker, supports to communities in the region, including for mental health and addiction issues, Honourable Speaker. And those came, Honourable Speaker, because we did listen to communities, including the member for North Island, including representatives of North Island Health, who met with representatives of all communities and, and Honourable Speaker, received their suggestions and, in fact, enacted those suggestions, Honourable Speaker. So I think, Honourable Speaker, uh, what, I, what I can say is what you see is a very significant challenge in those communities and specific action to address those challenges, which I think is what you need to do. It's why, Honourable Speaker, we put in place new to practice contracts in BC. 109 contracts signed. They were against them, Honourable Speaker. We put in place, Honourable Speaker, a fundamental reform to primary care, Honourable Speaker. We put it all, Honourable Speaker, not the status quo, in one week, Honourable Speaker. In one week, Honourable Speaker, one third Members. of primary care doctors have moved to the new model, Honourable Speaker. After 20 years of failure by then. Speaker, it is the absolute responsibility of Island Health to work with communities, as it is my responsibility, and we'll continue to do that. The actions that we took, Honourable Speaker, in Port Hardy and in Port McNeil and other communities were informed by those communities, and we are going to continue to act with that in mind.